once heard lots of people talking about this academia extravaganza thing earlier. Wonder what that is? Maybe there'll be fun things to do there. Let's go to the academia and have a look for ourselves. A moment, if you would. Are you two the famous traveler and Paimon by any chance? We sure are! And who are you? My name is Wikos, a member of the Academia Extravaganza Planning Committee. Have you two heard of this festival? Yep, and that's exactly why we're here. Is that so? Looks like our advertising is working. Since you're both interested, would you mind if I gave you a brief explanation of the event? <clears throat> so, the Academia Extravaganza is a grand event run by the Academia with a long and storied history. To be precise, it can be divided into the Wisdom Gala and the Inter-Darshan Championship. The gala is held annually. During this time, all six Darshans will set up booths throughout the city and host guests to showcase the most fascinating aspects of their school and thus increase their influence. On the other hand, the championship is held once every four years. Each Darshan will send a representative to vie for the position of Grand Champion. This year, the gala is being held alongside the championship, so the mood in the city is, as they say, at an unprecedented fever pitch. Got it! Cool! Thanks a bunch for the detailed explanation! You're most welcome. Answering questions regarding the Academia Extravaganza is my job. And... I actually do have something I would like to ask the two of you. Huh? Need our help with something? Well, let me begin by saying that this year's Academia Extravaganza is of utmost importance to us. Lesser Lord Kusanali and the Sages came up with a plan for the Academia to recruit talented people from the desert starting next year. As such, we've invited a great number of desert dwellers to take part in this festival, so they can hopefully experience the Academia's atmosphere ahead of time. I've heard that the two of you are famous across both the rainforest and desert. With your participation, especially in the Inter-Darshan Championship, more people will definitely come to appreciate the festival. Exactly! Or do you mean you want us to join a Darshan? Ugh, but then we would have to deal with exams and essays and stuff like that! No need to worry. The championship participants have already been selected. I mean to invite the two of you as guest commentators. Your job will be to observe and record every part of the competition. There's no pressure. Just follow each match and enjoy the festival. Aside from that, we'll also prepare some compensation for your efforts. We won't have you working for free. That kind of sounds like a sweet deal. What do you think? Yes, two others, in fact. Their responsibilities will be somewhat different from yours. One of our organizers will explain the details to you later at the main venue. So? How about it? Would you like to take this commission? Wow! Having fun while getting paid? This sounds awesome! The main event venue is at the outskirts of the Citadel of Regzar, and the organizer you're looking for is Karina. Tell her the situation and she'll get you set up. The championship is going to begin soon. I wish you a good experience serving as commentators. If you have any doubts, come find me anytime. Welcome, one and all, to the Academia Extravaganza! Now then, allow me to reveal the prizes for this iteration of the Inter-Darshan Championship. Fabulous monetary rewards, research funds, a limited edition Genius Invocation TCG card, and the right to wear the Diadem of Knowledge! I believe that I need not elaborate as to how this is a symbol of great honor. She should be Karina, right? Looks like she's in the middle of something. Let's wait till she's less busy, then go introduce ourselves. The Diadem of Knowledge. What a perfect work of art. <sighs> Every time I see it, I feel like I'm losing myself in its beauty. 
The one who proves fit to wear it must be a rare genius indeed. I believe that most of you have already seen the Diadem of Knowledge or have heard tales about it. Twenty years ago, a researcher named Sachin bought it for a large sum of Mora before donating it to the Academia. The generous championship prizes are also sourced from his sponsorship. Before we begin, allow me to express our gratitude to this researcher, who cannot be with us right now. Things can only get worse. Things can only go from bad to worse. Human nature begets conflict, and conflict begets ruin. From the beginning, the seeds of wickedness have been... Hey! Stop spacing out! Paimon called out to you, but you didn't respond. You okay? Did you stay up late without telling Paimon? All right. I'm sure we're all more than ready for the championship to begin. Now then, let's invite our six Darshan representatives to the stage. Our contestants are... Representing Amorta, Tainari! Representing Spontamod, Sino! Representing Ratawahist, Layla! Representing Haravatat, Farazan! Representing Kasharawar, Kave! And for Vahumana! Huh? Is Vahumana's representative not here yet? These introductions are pointless. Let's just get this over with. Uh, wait a sec. Why is he Vahumana's representative? Finally, our final contestant is Vahumana's representative, Hat Guy! Oh, so that's Hat Guy. I think I've seen him before. Uh, you know who he is? I've heard that he's a researcher from a different country who nominally belongs to Vahumana, where it is that he's written a lot of political analyses. His manner of speech hasn't made him popular amongst most other Vahumana researchers, but his comings and goings are quite irregular, so he doesn't interact with others much. Aside from his more controversial aspects, his perspectives are considered quite incisive. Vahumana has seen a dearth of new talent lately, and some of its existing ones are not currently at the Academia, so I suspect he might have been their only option. It's just kinda weird. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who'd participate in competitions like this one. Now that we have our six contestants, the championship will soon begin. Who will triumph this time around? Hold on to your hats, because we're all on this ride together! Contestants! Oh, right! We're guest commentators, aren't we? So figuring out everyone's reasons for participating is in our job description! Let's go ask them when we go say hi! Especially him! Paimon still thinks it's weird that he's here. Do you really think you can see through me? Um... So... Just call me Hat Guy. That's the name I use in Vahumana. That sounds like a nickname, not a real name. So I can't go by a simple, ordinary name? Fine, suit yourself. All right then, Hat Guy. Why are you taking part in the Interdarshan Championship? We're specially invited guest commentators, so play nice and answer our questions. You could be Matra for all I care. So what if I don't answer you? What then? Uh, you! 
<laughs> I'll tell you this much. I have an agreement with someone not to reveal my motives. You're not plotting something in secret, are you? Well, it's hard to say. Why don't you take a guess? Ugh, Paimon's had it with you! Fine, be that way. Then we won't ask you why you're participating. Instead, uh, why did you join Vahumana? You two sure like to poke your noses where they don't belong. If I don't say anything, are you going to annoy me to death? <sighs> I heard that the Vahumana researcher named Akaba was researching the Tatarasuna incident, so I wrote a few essays to refute his points. Later, when I was bored, I wrote some commentary on societal issues in Inazuma. I didn't expect Vahumana to consider me as one of them. <laughs> Someone even invited me to a lecture or whatever. From start to finish, it was just the wishful thinking of idiots. A misunderstanding. There's your answer. Simple. But when Lesser Lord Kusanali heard about this, she went out of her way to get me registered in Vahumana. She used the name Hat Guy. Enough chit-chat. You're better off wasting your time with the other contestants. Someone's about to get very unlucky. Wanna guess who? How is anyone supposed to relax with you around? <sighs> We've gotta stay alert and keep a close eye on him. Enjoy the Interdarshan Championship. This will be one to remember, I'm sure. Huh? Oh, it's you. Why are you here? We're here as specially invited guest commentators. Our job is to record what happens during the competition. Is that so? In that case, I'll have to trouble you to catch the moment of my triumph on camera. Remember to shoot from behind at a lower angle. You know, to capture a senior's class. Don't get ahead of yourself now. Victory will obviously be mine. <laughs> You're far too young to even consider challenging me. Kasharwar or Ratawahist, you're all children as far as I'm concerned. Uh, actually, I was going to ask, uh, how do you know me, Madame Farazan? Huh? You don't remember? I sometimes see you in the library at night. You even waved at me. Uh, uh, what? I don't remember doing that at all. Huh. How strange. However, this is not the time for curiosity. I am Farozan, a household name in Haravatat. You are Layla from Ertawahist, I presume? I yes Good. Then we are officially introduced. See? Simple as that. I like respectful ones, by the way. Would you like to join my research group? Madam Faruzan, I'm quite sure this counts as poaching. Let's dial things down. I know, but it's been tough getting people these days. And research funding has been hard to secure. But once I win this tournament, it'll be a different story. So you're just here to increase the amount of funding you're getting? Well, not just that. What, are you curious about my reasons for participating in this event? Well, I suppose that's to be expected. You are our guest commentators after all. There's been an influx of newly enrolled students, and they'll be paying close attention to this competition. If I do win, I'm certain that there will be no lack of students knocking upon my door. Moreover, research resources will be made available to the victor, so that will nix my funding issues. Therefore, my two juniors, I do apologize, but I fully intend to emerge triumphant. Uh, I'll do my best as well. At least I don't plan to lose too badly. So, why are you here, Layla? I don't know why, but a lot of people recommended me. 
I didn't sign up myself. I just woke up to find my name on the announcement board. Oh, I'm... I'm really nervous. I've been so worried about disappointing everyone that I've been... losing sleep. Stress not, young one. We must all experience failure to grow and mature. But, Madam Farsan, I don't want to fail. Oh, seriously? Everyone has such nice reasons for joining. Must I say? Yes, you do! We gotta record it! Um, well, you know, right? I want to buy some property. Oh, that's right! You wanna move out of all Hathams! Uh, 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 what? I'll hate them? What about him? This has nothing to do with him. Oh! Right, sorry, Paimon has no idea what she was talking about. So, you want to use the grand prize to buy a place, right? Correct. Also, my father took part in the Interdarshan Championship when I was young, but he didn't win. Once I do, the right to wear that diadem will be mine. In a way, I'll be helping my father fulfill a dream of his. That's not a bad reason at all. You have ambition, youngster. Although your chances with me here aren't great, I believe your father would be most proud if the diadem of knowledge were bestowed upon you. Not that he'll have the chance to celebrate. My father passed away many years ago. They say he ran into quicksand while traveling in the desert. Oh, for you to have experienced such a thing. That must have been tough for you. <clears throat> it's all in the past now, and life goes on, doesn't it? Let's change topics. I don't want to bring the mood down. All right. Earlier, you said that you want to use the prize Mora to purchase a home. Where do you live now? Do you live alone? Uh, uh, well... Hmm... I also heard you mention I'll hate them just a moment ago. Isn't he also from Haravitat? Are you two hiding something from me? Uh, no, of course not! Why would you think that? <laughs> Paimon's definitely not involved either! We're gonna go interview other contestants now. Bye! You know, I was just thinking, how did the two of you meet? I was wrestling with a particularly tricky problem, and she happened to pass by while I was puzzling over it at the house of Dana. She then proceeded to provide some comments. Provide some comments? I was bestowing instruction. <laughs> In truth, I have no intention of solving Kasharwar's problems for them. But I decided that this youngster seemed to have a decent attitude, and so we had a good chat. But ultimately, I am a Haravatat scholar, so please come to me with questions about linguistics next time. I'll show them how fierce this competition can be. Do I really have what it takes to represent the Ratawa Histarshan? With that prize money, I'll be able to move out of Alhatham's place. We meet again, you two. Hey, Tainori! We came here to check out this extravaganza event, and then they invited us to be guest commentators! Is that so? I heard that there would be guest commentators recording the proceedings with cameras, but <laughs> I didn't expect they'd be you two. It's a pleasant surprise that you're visiting Sumeru again while I'm still on leave. When everything comes together perfectly like this, I call it the biryani factor. Because it's always rice to meet stew again. Uh... Representing Amurta, and Sino is representing Spontamod. But haven't you both already graduated? Can alumni also take part in the competition? 
I had wondered the same thing. When I was told the news, I was actually more shocked than you are now. I later found out that anyone who has been a part of a particular Darshan has the right to participate. Graduation status has no effect. So that's a rule, huh? There are some restrictions, though. For example, sages cannot participate. Any given person can only participate in one instance of the championship, and so on. That's right. Also, there are two methods by which the Darshan representatives are chosen. One is self-nomination, and the other is to be recommended by over half of one's Darshan. You must have been a case of the latter, Tainari. I heard that quite a few of your juniors petitioned for your candidacy. Sometimes I wish I could clap a few of them over the head and tell them to spend that time on studying instead. <laughs> well, you can. But after some consideration, I realize this could be a good opportunity for me. Next month, we're having a public lecture on ecology at Gandharvaville. If I participate in this event, I might be able to utilize its popularity to promote the lecture. I'm not that concerned about becoming the champion. Unlike someone here. Yes. I'm using the last of my leave for this. When I heard that a limited edition Genius Invocation TCG card was one of the prizes, I signed myself up. This year's card is a rare one indeed. It would be a shame if I missed out on it. Wait, is it some kind of super powerful card? No, it's a very common one. But it has a holographic layer. Uh, so... what's the point? It's very cool. Uh, Paimon meant apart from being very cool. That is reason enough. I shall do my all to emerge victorious and add it to my deck. Uh, as someone who doesn't play cards much, I can't quite relate. But it isn't surprising that everyone has their own reasons for taking part in the tournament. Fair enough. All right, let's go find someone else to question. Looks like Karina's got a moment now. Let's go chat with her. I'm surprised you were willing to come to Sumeru City at all. Well, the atmosphere at the Academia has improved immensely since Azar and his ilk were deposed. Master has been busy recently, so he hasn't had the time to instruct me or try to convince me to return to the Academia. So I've been occasionally visiting the city these days. Trade and business are in greater abundance here, so it's much easier to acquire necessary research equipment. I must get that limited edition card. It doesn't seem that Sumeru City has changed too much. Ah, you must be the guest commentators Vikas invited. I've heard about you. I saw you two having quite the lively conversation, so I thought it would be best to wait. Are you two free right now? We were actually looking for you, too! Excellent! Then please allow me to explain your job responsibilities in detail. First, please take these two things. The first item is a custom camera from the Academia. Please use it to record the competition as it unfolds. The second is an event-specific locator that will flag all participants' locations. It will also sound when one of them completes an objective. Wow! What a convenient little thing! Aside from you two, there are two other commentators. However, they will remain by the commentators' area and will not be following the contestants in real time. Speaking of which, you probably know them. I'll hate them and Nilu. Well, don't let me keep you, unless you have any questions for me. Hmm? Why do you ask? Really? I didn't see any such person. Could I ask when you saw him? Strange. I was on stage the entire time, and I didn't see anyone come up. Paimon didn't see anyone either! 
<laughs> Perhaps you're mistaken. However, if you have any leads on that matter, you can talk to me at any time. Hey, Traveler. Paimon. Long time no see. So they're two friends of yours. In that case, I'll take my leave. May you all have a wonderful time during the extravaganza. The Academia sent us both invitations, so Dia suggested that we come together. The villagers were also encouraging me to travel outside the village. <sighs> I couldn't find it in myself to turn them down. We're here now, so no point dwelling on that. Even though this extravaganza isn't a holiday or anything, it's still a big deal here in Sumeru. Merchants from all over will set up shop. There'll be tons of stuff to eat, use, and wear, more than you can count. I'm already set on helping you buy two new outfits. I mean, who wears the same thing at work and home anyway? I'm looking forward to it. <sighs> Just being able to relax and wander the streets freely has already made my day. So, Traveler, Paimon, you two want to come with? Uh, we'd love to, but we've got work to do right now. Aw, oh, that's a shame. Let's hang out together when you're free, then. Sure! In that case, Candace and I'll head out first. Good clothing and fabrics are very much in demand. If you snooze, you lose. Oh, right. We should also get some accessories. No need to rush. I think we'll have a better time if we take things slow. See you two later. Feel free to come find us whenever you have the time. Paimon didn't think that Candace and Dia would come. Hanging out with them sounds like a great time. Still, looks like the competition's starting soon. Let's go over to where Alhatham is and see what's going on. <clears throat> I will now announce the rules for the first round of the competition. Please listen carefully. During the opening ceremony, Academia staff released several cages of butterflies, and many of them are now fluttering within Sumeru City. Amongst these butterflies, three of them will be special swift flies. They have a different appearance and also fly a little faster. Your objective this round is to find a swift fly and bring it to me. Three points will be awarded to the first participant to return, two to the second, and one point to the third. That is all for the first round. Should you require clarification on anything, please ask any of the other staff. Oh, Hatham's all business all the time, huh? Hmm. That said, how did he get picked to be a commentator? Paimon's kinda curious. Finding three specific butterflies in a place as large as Sumeru City sounds rather improbable. Hmm, if these swift flies behave anything like regular butterflies... I'm off. It will take some time to search every corner of Sumeru City. Huh? You're going just like that? A champion walks the road to victory. <laughs> My dear Kasharawar Jr., I have a plan. How about some cooperation between you and me? Cooperation? Looks like everyone's got their own plans for this, Tuffy. We're supposed to go on stage next, right? Uh, let's wait and see everyone's reactions first. Huh? Wait a minute. Look! He seems to be observing the other contestants just like we are! <laughs> we were right not to let our guard down! Do you remember those things we made previously? Huh? You mean... It's time for them to shine. It looks like Farazan and Kaveh have some secret plan. Oh, hello there. Madame Faruzan and I are discussing how... Shh! Hush now! The walls have ears around here. We should keep it a secret for now. But you'll find out what we have in store soon enough. Come now, let's go. Before the others act. 
All right, there's no time to lose. We're off to make our preparations. See you later. Hmm. This is basically what I'll need. Do you think you'll have any difficulties? I have most of the reagents with me, and I can buy the rest. Kale, you're here too! Um, Kainari, you have a master plan ready? My hypothesis is that the Swift Fly's morphological variations won't significantly affect their fundamental nature. So I'm planning on using this to lure them out. Of course, I could be wrong. Every mutation opens the door to new possibilities, especially when they are artificially introduced. Details will have to wait until after the post-experimental analysis. For now, Kale and I are going to buy some reagents for our experiment. All right, well, uh, see you later. Okay, see ya! Hmm. Hey, Layla! Hmm? You look a little worried. Yeah, I have no idea what I should do. What color are these swift flies? Do they have special markings? How do they differ from ordinary butterflies? Oh, I can't even figure out these basic questions and most of what I've learned in the past is completely useless here. Aren't people who research the star supposed to have some extraordinary abilities? Why not use astrology to solve it? Oh, you're another contestant. That guy was it? Is it that you can't use astrology during the day? <laughs> Guess that skill's less useful than I thought. No, it's not like that. If it's daytime, all I need is an astrolabe. So, why don't you do that then? Uh, Mona Magistus the astrologist said that those who constantly use astrology to obtain things that shouldn't be theirs will eventually lose the blessing from the stars. Ahem, uh -huh. it's just something I read in an academic publication. Uh, I really love to read Mona's essays. You're overthinking it. Power is just a tool. It just seems to me that you don't have the resolve to win this. Well, suit yourself. <sighs> Wallow in your immature ideals if you like. Hey! Seriously? Just walking off after saying a bunch of mean stuff like that? Uh, um, did I say something wrong just now? Uh, thank you so much. I've made up my mind not to use astrology for this. I think I'll just try my luck in the city. Uh, to be honest, I've always been pretty good at observation, and if I'm fortunate, I might be able to find that special butterfly species. Lord Sino seems to have found a swift fly. Come on, let's go check it out. Really? Where? The butterfly flew up high, and he's chasing it now. Oh, no time to lose. Let's go see. Ah, oh, as expected of Sino. Ah, oh, actually, shouldn't you two go have a look as well? The moment when he catches the butterfly will likely be one worth recording after all. Oh, I'll head into the city shortly to start my own search. I'll see you later. Alright, in that case, let's go see Sino first, and then we can check on what everyone else is up to. <laughs> Everyone hold hands! I'm going to try my luck in the city, too. I see everything! Hmm. I wonder who will emerge as the champion this time. Hey! Use the camera. Smile. Speak in a friendly and clear manner. That's what they told us to pay attention to, right? This is my first time commentating for such a competition. I'm feeling kind of nervous. Nilu, how did you get picked to be a guest commentator? 
The staff said that spectators would be less inclined to come if the contestants and commentators were all from the academia. I don't quite understand it, but I'm happy that we're able to all meet again. I didn't expect that you would be invited as well. Neither did we. Uh, by the way, how did you get picked, Alhatham? There were several factors, but primarily the recommendation of the sages. I suppose they assumed that I'd have the free time for this job after resigning as acting Grand Sage. That said, they'd probably claim that my calm demeanor would help maintain fairness in the competition. Sounds like you've got a lot on your plate. Not really. The job itself is quite simple and effortless. Are you sure it's alright to release so many? Have some faith. It'll be fine. Whew, what a crowd. Seems the Academia Extravaganza is in full swing. What do you want to get? Hmm... Maybe we can buy some gifts to bring back. Now? Huh, I usually get gifts last. Let's go walk around somewhere else first. Let me find a good place to... <sighs> good, we've got all our ingredients. Next, could I trouble you to help me mix them together? <laughs> Master. We found you, Sino! Oh, wait, is that a swift fly? Stay put! Don't move! Uh, he caught it! Huh? Sino, what's wrong? This isn't what I'm looking for. It's a. <sighs> Finally, I made it. I heard that you caught a swift fly, Sino. Mind letting me see what it looks like? Uh, hold on. Isn't this the mechanical bait that I released earlier? Why would you catch that instead of a swift fly? Wait a minute. If we consider this from a different angle, isn't it a good thing that the bait you made was convincing enough to fool even Sino? That's right. During a previous interior design project, I felt that the artificial flowers on a wall were a little bland, so I decided on placing a few moving mechanical butterflies to add some pizzazz. In order to make them both small and nimble, I consulted with Madame Faruzan. Not long ago, the two of us took all those mechanical butterflies and released them into the city. Why would you do that? <laughs> Need you even ask? Young people these days really do need to get out more. Have you never played that game where you play strips of paper on a bamboo pole and wave it across a field of flowers to attract a whole kaleidoscope of butterflies? No, I haven't. Wait, so you're trying to... That's right. The butterflies within the city will mistake our mechanical bait for one of their own and follow them around. As long as we keep releasing and retrieving our bait, we can capture all the butterflies within the city. What comes afterward is just a matter of separating the swift flies from the others. Huh. Guess that's one way to do it. Do not underestimate the wisdom of your elders. I had already thought of this method the moment the round's rules were announced. Of course, we also owe much to this fine junior of mine here for making such lifelike butterflies. It seems that Kasharawar has not quite declined as far as I had thought in recent years. Their teaching skills at least seem to be intact. Well, I just stuck to what I do best. The idea was yours. Ah, no need to be so polite. Once we capture all these butterflies, we shall split the points for this round. Ah, look! One of them is returning now. Huh? Wait a moment. Are my eyes deceiving me? Why don't I see any butterflies behind it? That's because there are none. Seems like your plan has hit a snag. Looks like the match continues. I'll be looking elsewhere. Huh. Strange. Has something else diverted their attention? Come, let's search in the direction the bait returned from. We'll go have a look too. How could it not be real? Huh? Frozen? Kaveh? Why did you two stop? 
Ah, so it was the Morta boy. Tainari! Fascinating, isn't it? The butterflies have all congregated here due to a special incense that I used. I infused it with three different types of honey, and the butterflies, following the fragrance, have gathered around me. Oh, butterflies must have really sharp noses then. <sighs> Wait, do they even have noses? <sighs> I've never seen one. They do not, in fact, and their vision isn't stellar either. However, they can use their antennae to distinguish between scents, and their olfactory senses are generally quite advanced, allowing them to detect floral fragrances from great distances. Oh, so that's how it is. Huh. I had a pet butterfly once. I picked wildflowers and placed them in its box, but it wouldn't eat any. That's normal. Raising butterflies isn't difficult, but there are many things you should take note of. Appropriate temperature, sufficient air, and a spacious environment are examples of such considerations. You must also ensure that the food you've chosen suits their palate. Most importantly, you must curb your curiosity and avoid disturbing them while they rest. Otherwise, they may become stressed. Ah, uh, sorry. I liked to poke at its wings at the time. Uh, humans tend to rear many creatures due to their aesthetic value, but not all are suited to such a process. Caring for living beings is hard work. Impulse alone is insufficient. Some prerequisite knowledge is always required. You sure do know a lot! Uh, I have a question too. I bought a scarab not long ago and it hasn't seemed very active. Can you help me figure out why? I'd like to keep a dust bird as a pet. What are some key points I should consider? Um, is it possible to keep a Rishpalan tiger as a pet? All right, it seems like you all have a great deal of questions. <laughs> but I am in the middle of the Interdarshan Championship at the moment, so I'm afraid I can't answer them all now. Let me propose an alternative. Next month, there will be a biology lecture at Gandharvaville, and I will be sharing some interesting insights on living organisms there. If you're interested, you can attend that lecture, and if you should have any questions, just prepare them ahead of time. I'll answer questions after I've finished speaking. Uh, all right, I'll be there. Of course, please try to ask more... rational questions. For example, whether you can raise a Rishpalan tiger as a pet or not is mainly dependent on whether you can overcome one in a fight. Looks like Tainari's science lecture will draw quite a crowd! Huh? Oh. Ahem. <clears throat> Was I listening in for that long? It seems Kale's master does live up to his title as a teacher. Madam Farozan, I've had a look around. Nearly all the butterflies in this area have been attracted by the incense. However, we can cast our bait further away to avoid this area. All right, then let's get moving. We shan't let all the butterflies get away from us if we can help it. Seems like the competition's really heating up. Let's go see how the other contestants are doing. Hmm. The scent is starting to fade. Seems the wind is stronger than I thought. The incense isn't going to last long. This is taking longer than I thought. Layla! How are things going on your end? Uh, I've been searching for quite a while now, but I haven't seen any sign of the swift flies yet. Instead, I ended up catching a few mechanical devices that looked very similar to butterflies. Uh, I wonder where they came from. Uh, looks like Farozan and Kaveh's devices are everywhere now. I'll keep up the search. That said, I've noticed that a number of butterflies in the city has already decreased a lot compared to when the event started. Probably because the other contestants are coming up with their own ways to catch butterflies. Uh, Alright, I'll do my best too. Uh, huh? What's this? Oh, what a coincidence. I guess I just need to catch it now, right? Oh, um, please wait. Ah, oh, there it goes. It's so fast! Paimon thought all Haytham said they were only a little faster. No, come back. Come on, Traveler, let's go too. Here's going off! Looks like so. 
someone's already cut themselves a swift fly. It just occurred to me that we should also get you a makeup box. No, it's fine. I don't think I'll end up using it. Maybe you won't, but it doesn't hurt to have one, right? Come on, just trust me on this one. Huh? Uh, who are you, and what do you want? Uh, please, don't move. Don't move? Who sent you? Dia. Don't worry, I can handle this. Now, tell me, what do you want? <laughs> I believe she's looking for this. Here, take it. A, a butterfly? Was it on my head? It's been a while, Layla. A friend of yours? Oh, so she must be the one you were telling me about. Huh? You two know each other? Oh yeah, it has been some time. The first time I ever woke up after sleepwalking, I somehow found myself in Aru Village. <laughs> Candace was the one who took care of me then. That's right. She didn't look well, so I gave her something to eat. She said a lot of complicated things about astrology, the night sky, the stars. Not sure I understood it all, but it sounded pretty enchanting. Right. Do you still want this butterfly? It seems like you were chasing it all the way here. It's of little use to me, but if you don't want it, I can release it. Just let her have it. It's no big deal. The swift fly was flying so fast, but you were able to catch it like it was nothing, Candace. Oh, it didn't seem that quick, really. I was actually worried that I would injure it, but I'm glad that didn't happen. Anyway, sorry about the butterfly thing. With the way you suddenly came running over like that, I thought you were hired to take us out or something. Huh. On second thought, I guess I've never seen an assassin that looks tired with dark bags around their eyes. Oh, you must be taking part in the championship. Tch, take it from me. Don't let it stop you from getting some rest. Uh, I'll do what I can. Thank you. Hmm. We'll be on our way then. See you later. It seems we have a third contestant who has returned with a swift fly. With that, the first round has come to an end. I anticipate that all of you will keep up the effort for the second round. Dismissed. Ah, uh, um, your closing statement sounded so... How do I put it? Decisive? Well, you could certainly stand to try being more decisive, Nilu. It would help you live more freely. Hang on a second. Contestants with swift flies. Tainari was first, and as for the second, it's being discussed right now. Hey, Alhatham, I think I've come up with a good idea. Second place gets two points, right? Can't Madame Faruzan and I split the points between us? Quite the imagination you have there. I've read the championship handbook from cover to cover, and I never saw any rule which permits that. Then we can just add a rule. Do you really think I'd do that? Oh, come on, you're not going to stand in the way of my victory, are you? Well, you're free to send the organizing committee an application outlining your naive proposal. They'll get back to you within three working days. Three working days? It'll be too late by then! 
<laughs> Unfortunately for you, even dreaming is gonna cost you. Ah! Paimon gets it now. Kave and Farazan found the second swift lie together, but the rules say that only one person can get the points. <sighs> oh well, the rules are the rules. Since you call me madam and politely ask for my help, I shall give you these points. So I'll put the points under Kabe's name then? No. If I take these points, won't that only detract from your contributions, Madam Faruzan? You might be alright with that, but I cannot do it. Not in good conscience. I don't have any problem with it. There are two more rounds after all. Losing one isn't a major setback. But if you insist, I have another method. We can draw lots to see who will receive the points. But lots, huh? What? Is there something wrong with that idea? Uh, no. Well, let's do it. All right. I'll get the paper needed for the lots. Give me a moment. Oh, seriously? <laughs> I'm sorry, but it appears that luck was on my side this time. No, you do deserve it. I'm just lamenting my bad luck. Perhaps... Oh, perhaps that's why my life is rife with troubles. <laughs> Indeed. It's rare to see anyone with such terrible luck be so willing to decide victory via lots. And what would you know about that? I just... Uh, we can save bickering for later. Record the points under Farazan, and that'll finally bring the first round to a close. The second round will be held in the desert. We'll be moving our commentator stand over to Aru Village. Let's meet up in Aru Village once everything is ready. I'll announce the details of the second round then. Till then, you have some free time. I'm off the clock at this point, so it's farewell for now. Wait, I'll hate them! You... Ugh. Don't be upset, Kave. Sighing can carry away your good luck, you know. Oh, so that's how it works. In that case, I'll take in some deep breaths. Maybe that'll help me make up for all the luck I've lost? <sighs> it's really no big deal. Two points aren't enough to decide victory or defeat just yet. I'll win the next round, you'll see. Looks like you've managed to pick yourself back up, young man. Good. I must warn you, though, that I'm quite familiar with the desert. You'll have to try your best if you don't want to lose. I'm no stranger to the desert either. I'll be fine. All right then, that's enough chit-chat for now. I'm going to check the area out. Hmm. So the current standings are Tainari in first place, Farozan in second, and Layla in third. Oh, guess we should also take a nice break before the next round starts. But where should we go first? Why, you two look a little lost. If you're not sure where to start enjoying the Academia Extravaganza, then may I suggest that you have a chat with our boss? Your boss? Who's that? Do we know them? <laughs> well, only the most famous merchant in all of Sumeru, Lord Sangama Bay. Oh, you mean Dory! Precisely. Our boss sent me to inform you two that she'll be waiting for you at Sumeru City's North Gate. Oh, well if it isn't the Traveler in Paimon. Hey Dory, are you here to attend the Academia Extravaganza Q? Of course. People are practically flocking to Sumeru City. You couldn't ask for a better opportunity to do business. This is one of the entrances into the city, and it's very close to the Wisdom Gala booths. There'll be an endless stream of customers. <laughs> I can already hear the Mora going clink, clink, clink as they fill my coin pouch. Well, is there anything you'd like to purchase? We've got everything you need and deals that can't be beat. Hmm. Well, do you have anything to eat? Oh, wait. We're celebrating the extravaganza, and you're only thinking of eating... <clears throat> I mean, of course, we've got lots of things to eat. 
with that said, I recommend that you also consider some of the great bargains we have going on. The Wisdom Gala is about to begin, and once it starts, each of the Darshans will prepare a small challenge for everyone. And just between us, I have some Super Booster Supplements for sale. Eat just one to boost both your strength and dexterity for a short time, allowing you to overcome any challenge. Uh, no thanks, we'll pass. These little challenges are gonna be a cinch for the two of us. Just you watch. Anyway, Paimon just wants something to eat, please. If you don't have any food, then we'll just go somewhere else. All right, all right. Mora is Mora, after all. Oh, what would you like to eat? Hmm, well, Paimon's pretty hungry right now. Uh, do you have any touching? Let me see. This is a huge job, isn't it? If this works out, we'll be set. Here you go. Two servings of touching. See? I told you there's nothing Lord Sangama Bay can't procure. Yay! Uh, huh? What are you looking at, Traveler? Oh? Who? Someone we know? Was it someone suspicious? Have we attracted some unwanted attention? Huh? What's happening, Dory? Is there something else going on? I don't know who you saw just now, but I do have some hard-to-come-by information about the extravaganza. If you want to know more, we can talk business later. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 